In this video, we're going to compare two personal aerial vehicles, namely the Jetson one that has recently created strong ripples on the internet, and the SkyDrive SD3 that is backed by Toyota. And we will attempt to answer the question, how can we increase the flight time for these aircraft? Both the Jetson 1 and SkyDrive SD3 have similar design in that they are multi-copter configuration and have no tilting mechanism. They don't have any fixed wings and control surfaces for maneuvering. The takeoff and landing, forward flight and turns are all controlled by simply changing the speed of the four pairs of contra-rotating coaxial rotors that are powered by eight separate motors. Both of these aircraft can therefore be categorized as passenger carrying drones. They work exactly like their smaller counterparts. There is one major difference between the two multi-copters, and that is the size. Compared to the Jetson one, the SD3 is almost twice the size. This is despite both aircraft being made to carry just one person. This difference in size leads to a huge difference in performance that we will investigate in this video. And it is this performance difference that would lead us to identify the parameters which are critical for designing a passenger drone with maximum endurance. Let's look at the Jetson one first. It has been designed not for urban air mobility or delivery services in mind, but for purely recreation purposes. The empty weight of the aircraft is just 86 kilograms. For an occupant weighing 85 kilograms, it gives a 20 minute flight time. If the payload is increased to 100 kg, then the flight time drops down to just five minutes. The low value for the empty weight of the aircraft qualifies it for the ultralight category, which means that pilot's license is not required, but there is a mandatory two day training offered by Jetson that needs to be completed before one is allowed to fly it. If you are keen to buy this machine, which has been priced at 92,000 US dollars, then it's worth shedding the extra weight from your body to give you the extra seconds of flight time. The weight is strongly coupled to the power required. A 10% increase in the weight results in 15% extra power required. A 20% increase in the weight results in 31% extra power required. So the higher the weight of the occupant, the sooner the batteries will get drained because of the extra required power. This is also compounded by the fact that the higher the rate at which one drains the battery, the lesser the overall energy the battery will deliver as a significant portion of the energy is lost in batteries internal and external joule heating. So the flight time is even less. To keep the aircraft weight low, the Jetson 1 uses an aluminium and composite chassis with crumple zones. The crumple zones are important to cushion the impact energy in case of a crash. The bare minimum airframe saves a lot of weight and its small dimensions keep the aircraft more agile. The top flight speed is 101 km per hour or 63 miles per hour, which has been limited by the software and the maximum altitude it can reach is 457 meters or 1500 feet. The Jetson 1 battery pack consists of swappable 52 volts lithium ion modules. The pack has to be removed to be charged, which is a clever way of not only saving extra weight, but also reducing the charging and relaunch time. From calculations, the weight of the battery pack has been estimated to be around 50 kilograms. Now let's have a look at the SkyDrive SD3. Compared to the Jetson one, the dimensions of this aircraft are nearly double. That is, it has a length and width of 4 meters by 4 meters and a height of 2 meters. It weighs more than 4 times the Jetson one. The empty weight of the SD3 is 400 kilograms. With the pilot included, the maximum takeoff weight can reach 500 kilograms. This means that its high weight tilts it beyond the threshold for the ultralight aircraft category. The high weight really bogs down the SD3. It has a total flight time of just five to 10 minutes depending upon the payload. This is despite the fact that it has a bigger battery pack and larger propellers estimated at around 1.35 meters in diameter as compared to Jetson 1, which has 0.9 meter diameter propellers. 
The speed of the SD3 is also sluggish compared to Jetson 1. The top speed is only 50 km per hour or 31 miles per hour. The airframe for the SD3 has landing skids and cockpit that encapsulates the pilot almost completely. It can reach an altitude of 150 meters. Unlike the Jetson 1, which is built for recreation, the SD3 is built with a vision to be a transportation aid that eases commute. It has to be mentioned that the SD03 is an intermediate model. The final version of the SkyDrive would look a lot different. So this brings us to the most important question. How could we raise the flying time from just a few minutes to let's say nearly an hour? The increase in flight time could lead us to a host of new possibilities and applications for both these aircraft. The most obvious solution would be to add more battery cells in the aircraft, but as we have seen that it is not that simple because of the strong coupling between the required power to lift the aircraft and the weight of the aircraft. Adding more batteries adds to the weight. Furthermore, both Jetson 1 and SD3 are 100% hovering aircraft and there's no fixed wing lift, so the required power remains nearly constant. It is well researched fact that in hovering electric aircraft, the flight time increases as more battery is added but with diminishing returns. Each additional kilowatt hour of battery adds fewer and fewer seconds to flight time. This happens till a point is reached where additional battery does not add any further flight time but decreases it. Studies have shown this inflection point to be when the battery weight fraction is two-thirds of the maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft. For example, calculations show that for Jetson 1, if we add 5 kilowatt hour of extra battery, then flight time would increase by 5 minutes. And if we added 20 kilowatt hour of extra battery, then we would just increase the flight time by 8 minutes. This begs the question if adding a large amount of battery is really worth the extra flight time as the cost of the aircraft and its charging will also rise. A better solution would be to increase the rotor size for Jetson 1. The current version has a 0.9 meter diameter rotor while the SD03 has a 1.35 meter diameter rotor. If we were to let's say swap the Jetson's 0.9 meter rotor with the 1.35 meter rotor, then the flight time would increase by four minutes with the same battery pack. And this is inclusive of the added weight penalty because of the larger rotor and larger supporting frame. The aircraft would become however slightly bigger and therefore slightly less maneuverable. The other method by which flight time could be increased is by making the fuselage and landing skids such that they capture the rebounding air off the ground. The added lift by capturing the rebound air is called the fountain lift. Although the benefits of fountain lift dissipate at high speed forward flight, but while hovering and at slow speed traversing, it can save power. One other way the flight time could be increased is by using higher energy density batteries. The current batteries used in these aircraft have an energy density of 260 watt hour per kilogram. If this increases to 500 watt hour per kilogram in the near future, as is expected with the arrival of solid state batteries, then the flight time for Jetson 1 would rise by 14 minutes if the same battery pack weight is maintained. That is rising from 20 minutes to 34 minutes. I'm including the chart for the estimated flight times if more batteries are added. And with this, the video is concluded. Do let me know how do you feel about these aircraft? Would you like to fly one of these in a remote area? If you learned something from this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.